Right, it's that time of year again. I'm just getting it ready for the spring. So I've just pushed it out of the shed and the front brakes are sticking, which they have been for a little while. Um, I've got some new seals for that. So I never changed them when I actually put it on the road three years ago. Uh, just having a quick look over. She was a little bit of a clean. You know I'm not that bothered. Um, there's some rust coming around there. And I've noticed these baffles look a blistering. I hope that ain't rust. It's not so bad on the other side. Um, I don't know if you can see that. It's just a couple of bubbles there. Nothing underneath. I'm hoping that's just the paint. And not me taking it on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> so what I need to do now take these out I've started undoing them and I'll probably have to prise that off these are the new seals that are going on um, I shall set the camera up and then we can have a look so the two bolts that hold that on are just 14 mil, 14 mil spanner to take these off um, because it's sticking, I'm probably going to have to prise it off. So. so just get that spanner in there, pull that off. There we go, that wasn't too bad. Um, so what, what I normally use, if it's... So I'm just going to put a part carver clamp <coughs> across here. and this will just push the piston back. Right, so, just so the brake shoe, sorry, just so the brake pad is just clear of the lug, and then that'll just pop out. I don't know if you're aware um, I don't know if you're aware that when you buy parts well especially for the Super Dream they only sell one side at a time <laughs> so when you buy them you don't end up with two sets of seals you just get one set so that one's out and I need to pop this one out so it's just a matter of just gently teasing it forward like that. A little bit of corrosion, I'll just put a little bit of grease on it. And then you use your, your lever just to push this piston out. There she comes. There, like that. Just coming out like that. I don't know whether you notice, I haven't got the I haven't got the uh, the boot to go round the piston, so that needs to go on. That's the seal itself, um, and then there should be two of these and the bleed nipple. So I'll do these first. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep pumping until it pops out. Just put a bucket underneath because I don't know whether you're aware or not that brake fluid is really corrosive, so it would just pop out and run in there. You just need to keep aware on the old bubble. You don't want to run out of brake fluid, otherwise you'll be pulling air into the system. So I think I better go and top that up. So I've just popped the two Phillips screws out there, and I'm just going to ease this off. But you have to be really careful because, like I said earlier, the, the brake fluid is so corrosive. When I was a teenager, I remember topping the brake fluid up once. And um, I got it on the tank, didn't notice, and it stripped the paint. <laughs> I've never made that mistake again. So I'm just going to pop this out and then put some more fluid in. 
Oh, I've just caught that in time. So it's topped it up and I'm just going to pump it out. Oh, there we go. There we go. There's your piston. Yeah, it's not too bad. Of a... I mean, it's about well, forty years old. What do you expect? So now I need to fish that. I don't know if you can see that seal in there. I need to fish that seal out there. So that'll be this one here. There's a lot of muck in there that wants cleaning out. Be careful not to damage the, the aluminium. It's just a matter of getting behind it. It's just done it. Just got that out. Right. There we go. So I'm just going to clean. There's some muck in there. Just clean it all up. I'm just thinking about that exhaust. Them baffles are only been on for two years. Oh, I don't know. Cheap and nasty. That was only 30 quid each. <laughs> the new O-ring, or piston seal, it just pops back into the recess. So I've just cleaned round the recess, make sure there's no corrosion. And then I'm just going to pop this back in. It's a tricky little sucker. So I just push that in there. Yeah, that's easy enough. That's easy enough. There we go. It's in there nice. I'm just gonna, I'm just a smidgen of brake fluid around there so it just slides in. Just to help the piston slide in. A splash of this in as well. That's it, just take the air out. So, this should in theory just slide in. I think I'm going to have to release that. That's better, I'll just put a bit of wood across the bucket. Um, that's going in nice now, so I've completely disconnected it. Um, I probably wouldn't have had to do this if the, if the bleed nipple weren't. But there you go, look, that's going in nice now. I've got some fluid in it, so that'll help lubricate it. Ah. Just gently easing it in. There you go. 
Going in lovely. Lovely. So the piston's pushed right back in now, and now this boot wants fitting. Right, so it's on in there, and now it's just to pop that round the outside of there, like that. That's it. That went on lovely and easy, look at that. That's it, that load on there. come out and these will definitely want a bit of grease on that's just fell out and that's that goes I can show you where that goes there stop it from wearing the aluminium it's just to protect it where the brake shoes sit Make sure you always put them back in. Right, there we go. So there's there's the other one there, it's all covered in crap. There it is. Oh they're well oiled. Ah. There you go. So you've got new copper washers uh, and they, they'll obviously go on here, there and I think there's a little seal as well, a couple of seals and your bleed nipple but unfortunately mine broke off about 20 years ago and it just ain't going to come out. <laughs> There's your, that's it. Clean right there. Oh yes, it has got a plastic sleeve on it. Does that one go there? Yeah. One's got a plastic sleeve on and they'll only go Seems like they only just go in. Like there we go. So they go there. I'm going to put that plastic. Oh, um, I'm going to put this in first. Like so. I don't know if it's an anti-squeal or 
but it would definitely stop wear on the on the alley casting definitely and these two flats need to be lined up that's it so your two your two flats there that I'll put the spanner on earlier lines up there okay that's good Tighten them up. Put it back on there. I'm going to put some brake fluid in here and get the air out. So these are nipples gone. I'm going to top that there, roll it around a bit, get all the air out. I know it works because I've done this for years. <laughs> That's it, she's fallen out. It's a little squeeze. Turn that on. Turn I'll wash it down afterwards. What I can do is take the other caliper off, put a bit of wood in between it so it can't close, and then operate this side and see if it pulls up on that on that disc but I've done this loads of times and it's always worked like I say I've done it on a car as well and that went through the MOT okay spring clip goes down in nicely like that there's a bit of me rubber glove in there look <laughs> mm. right. this drops down onto them
And there you go. Bit fiddly, but not impossible. So it's just a matter of putting this all back together. Yeah, it's there. So I've put the other side back together. I've taken this side off and I've put um, a couple of pieces of steel in between there. And what I'm going to do now is operate the brake to show you that the caliper does work and that's the way you can bleed it when you've got a broken bleed nipple. So the wheel turns nice and free, like this. Brake on. There you go. So now you know that the other side that you've already bled is fine. <clears throat> so now I'm just going to take the bar out that I put to stop the piston from coming right out and popping the brake shoes out, brake pads. So that comes out like that. So I'm going to put this back on, loosen this off. So you do exactly the same as you did on the other side. Um, I still put a bit of fluid in, make sure it's nice and lubricated the seal when you put it in. So um, as you can see, you should be able to just push this back on. Like that. And that's because you put the steel in between it. So let me just put a bolt in just to hold it in place. Right. So you do exactly the same as you did before, which I'm going to do, but this time, so you put all your fluid in as much as you can, you replace all this, but this time you, this is your bleed nipple, and you just get an 8mm spanner, you crack it open, you pull your brake lever in, then you tighten it, then you release. You keep repeating this until there's no air coming out. Keeping a bucket underneath, obviously, because brake fluid is nasty stuff. So that's how you bleed a brake when you've got a broken bleed nipple. And always remember to keep an eye on that brake fluid. Look at the state of that pot. It's only three years old. When they say cheap Chinese rubbish, they're not joking, are they? I don't know how long it will last. And that's it. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. Alright, catch you later. Bye.